This playthrough is rated T for teen. It's nice to be back on dry land. Greetings and salutations, viewers. Well, we're back here with another episode of Shadowrun SNES, the beta version. In the last episode, we went to the rusted shipyard of Bremerton, found the Jester Spirit, said his true name, and now he is ours. Though we, he did quite a bit of damage to us, and I kept attacking him multiple times. Re I'm forgetting that I, I must have done so much damage, I, I put him into his third phase without realizing it. And, uh, yeah, that was kind of silly of me. Because that's happened to me. I think that happened to me before when I first fought him. I I got to his uh, next phase, and I, I guess I missed the dialogue or something like that, and I just kept shooting. I was like, dude, this guy's got, like, a million HP. How's that possible? And then, yeah, you're supposed to talk to him when he says that. So, But, anyway, before we head on to their next destination, which is this large building here because of all the info we've got, here, a few things have unlocked. Um, after beating uh, the Jester. They only unlock after you've left Bremerton via the portal. If you run all the way back and don't do the portal thing, then a lot of the stuff won't unlock because it, despite the fact that you could continue on, quote unquote, the game doesn't realize you've hit the next objective. So it, it'll not activate these properly. So make sure to go through that portal. Plus the thing I want to do up ahead requires you to go through the portal. As you can see here, my karma is really high because I grinded the ghouls in the uh, uh, Darkblade mansion, but I've got a lot of money. How'd I get all this money from it? There's no way. I had like 1,800, yeah, 18,000 New Yen by the time we finished the last section. There's no way I should have this much money. Well, I'm going to show you how I did that here in a second. Let's go ahead and get some of the stuff that unlocks, though. And, of course, I'm going to get these guys because I actually still need a bit more karma. So, yeah, this game... Um, you could, like, I think that's the way that the you're supposed to, like, get all the karma or get all the money is by just, uh, like, grinding for karma so you get kind of money at the same time. But that's a little tedious and monotonous, and I'm not the biggest fan of that. I like this game, I really do, but there is some stuff about it that is just quite a, annoying to do. Actually, was there? Nah, yeah, they probably didn't have me. I never really talked to the guys here, did I? Can't stop the weasels closing in, man. <laughs> That's funny. Oh, yeah, the stallkeeper has nothing to say. Okay, anyway, we want to go to back to Dr. Maplethorpe. Um, and, uh... Hey, can I go inside? Okay. Yes, I'd like to see the doctor, please. Okay, there we go. We just had to talk to her. For some reason, she wouldn't let us in. Okay, yeah, for some reason, she didn't want to go inside. Hey... Hello, Jacob, looking much better. Yeah, he says that when you first pop in. But yeah, a new upgrade has appeared here. The dermal plating. You, this is outside the booster reflexes. This is uh, another one of the best upgrades in the game. On the trays of the dermal plating. We want to buy this thing. Gimme, gimme, gimme. If you want an invasive protection system, then try the dermal plating. Do you want to buy it for 6,000? Yes. Yes, please. Get up on the table, Jake, and I'll put it on you. Are on for you. Uh, basically, uh, in the Shadowrun lore, they basically rip out your skin and put the uh, dermal plating under it and then place your skin back on it. Or they put synthetic skin, depending how invasive the surgery is. But yeah, you're basically becoming more... Well, I already made the joke. More machine now, man. Uh, now what happens is our armor goes up by two permanently to any it adds it to any armor we carry so you know the mess jacket was at two now it's at four it still works even if you're not wearing armor so you have a permanent ac of two even if you weren't wearing armor which is awesome but that's like i said that adds to any armor you wear so we want to upgrade our armor as well this unlocks when you beat the jester too now if you you could already get the better armor if you go to the top of drake's tower and not do the final bit with him if you want to lock the better armor, but I want to get this now because Drake's Tower is actually kind of difficult if you don't have the invisibility spell, which we do now. But um, and if you hire Kitsune earlier, or um, uh, forgot the other something, the clams, uh, Dance with the Clams, I believe his name is. Um, he also has invisibility, and you could use him or his armor spell. But anyway, we want to go back to the Dark Blade, the Dark Blade Mansion. So. And actually, we want to go to the weapon shop, obviously, but we want to do some more exploration outside that uh, before we go to the uh, Drake's Tower. So let's go see the uh, dude here. Let's see, where is it? No, not there. Okay, yep, here's the new weapon I'm talking about. The uh, the Heckler Kosh 277 uh, Assault Rifle at 2400 New Yen. We want to buy this. This is the next upgrade for our weapon. If you didn't already get the Uzi, which, I mean, this weapon's still better than the Uzi, though, because it, um, 
yeah, this one you let you hold down the button, but this weapon does, has a, um, I think it's accuracy of like three and attack of 12. That means we will finally be doing double digits when we hit stuff. So let's buy this. Yes. That's where I wanted all the money from. So, uh, okay. So I'm actually, where's the other one? No, I don't want to buy that. Oh yeah. The partial body suit, but, uh, oh yeah, I'm a little off on money. So, but we'll get some money here in a second. So let me, um, let me equip that rifle. We could sell the shotgun or the zip gun if you want, but let's uh, use that. Right, we're not strong enough. Right. <laughs> That's why I wanted to do something else, too. You know what? We can still do what we need to do. I just wanted to buy it, and then I'll equip it later. So, And I need to get a little extra money. How do I get that little extra money? Outside of what I just grinded for earlier. Well, if we go back in the Dark Blade Mansion, yes, most enemies are gone, except for the ghouls, which you can still grind for karma, which I still need to do that. But, uh... Let's go see about our vampire friend. Remember how we killed him? You know, shouldn't be there anymore. I just want to see his corpse, you know, just to kind of uh, remind myself of what we've uh, done on our journey. And I cast invisibility on Katsune just so she won't get attacked, so she won't accidentally die, which will, this is will probably where most of my magic will be going. If you don't have Katsune on your team, then you'll want to worry about saving her butt every five seconds, so. Do, 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 do. Oh, right. Got to cast on her again so she doesn't get ramshackled by these guys. Okay. Anyway. Da, da, da. What the? What are you doing here? You're supposed to be dead. We killed you. We killed you. Actually, he's not actually supposed to be alive. That's a bug in the game. Um, from what I understand, it's, well, it's a bug and not a bug. What what it, what it is, from what I understand, is the, the code of the game... Um, is tie, uh, ties this, the vampire to appear if you don't have a certain um, item in your inventory or ask about or keyword in your inventory. So it's part of the keyword system. Now, when we first talked to him, we knew about Nirvanda and Laughlin, right? Wait, they're not in my keywords anymore. What happened? Where are they? Well, when you beat Bremerton and go through the portal, it wipes the it wipes like six uh, six um, keywords from your inventory. I forgot the other ones. I think it's like. Um, it's a Nirvana, Laughlin, I think Bremerton also gets, yeah, uh, wiped and a couple others. And because you don't have Laughlin in your inventory or keywords, then the vampire respawns because it's like a fail safe to give you the Laughlin so you're not like stuck somewhere or whatever. But they didn't code in the fact that the vampire should stay away permanently after, um, after that. So what we do is just ask him the questions, go out of the inventory, stake him again. And uh, he'll give us the laugh one thing because we have to go through this whole process. Ah, scream. <laughs> I still love the scream. It'd, it'd be even funner if it was like the Wilhelm scream or something like that. And ask him about the gesture spear. Yep, yep, yep. Laughlin. Good, good, good. And then stake him one more time. Now you're probably thinking, when we stayed the last time, we got some karma and some money. That can't be there again, right? Nope. It's still there. It's the same. It's basically as if he had never been killed in the first place, and that's how I got the money for that. Five thousand yen every time you kill him, and for karma, though not doing it for the karma specifically. Although I do need a little bit more karma for grinding purposes, but I'll do. Actually, I'll, I'll kill some now just because we're right here. But uh, this is the best time to like get your because when with the new weapons and armor I can buy. Um, this will make grinding for the rest of my karma very uh, a lot easier. So let's go back to the shop now that we have the money for it to buy the armor, and then I need to uh, upgrade my strength. And we might at this point it's better to get your strength up to six, so that way we can equip the rest of the the best weapons and armor in the game. Um, which is why I couldn't uh, couldn't equip the assault rifle right now. So let's go back to uh, bed. Oh yeah, in the shop, of course. But yeah, and you're probably thinking, well, that's only a one-time thing, right? You, the vampire won't spawn again if you go through Bremerton. Nope, you can do that again and again and again and again. Every time you go through Bremerton, it removes Laughlin from your keywords, and they have to talk to the vampire to get it again. And you can, um, you can uh, get a uh, get him to respawn to get five thousand credits and four uh, four karma every time you beat him. So anyway, we want to buy the. Um, partial body suit for 20,000 which that's a really good suit of armor because it gives you five defense a lot more than the mesh jacket at two and with the dermal plate we can get up to seven armor that'll be that'll help us like negate 80% of the damage from like 
well, most of the stuff in the game outside of the in-game stuff, like, people on the street won't be able to hurt me anymore. That's how much defense I'll have. Unfortunately, Kitsune will still be a target, which is why I wish I kept the leather jacket when I did. But, you know, we, we, we don't talk about how I messed that up. So. And all that would really do was it would kind of negate a few points of damage from her. would have made it a little bit easier, but with invisibility, I'm going to, it should be fine. Because uh, we'll be, probably be using most of our magic on her anyway to keep her alive. And then I'll use her magic to heal me when I get really low. Just because it's it's faster to have me cast magic than it is to talk to her. Because it takes her like a few seconds to activate. So let me go. Now like I said, I still need Karma even for the end game if I want to. I don't know if I'll max out my stats completely. Uh, but it does help for the end game. Just, you know, from all the stuff you have to go through. So, all right, let's go to the uh, um, hotel. Yep. Yep, pay you the 50 new yen. Bit of muscle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even though Kitsune, you know, flirted with us, she still would not want to go in the bedroom. Mainly because it's supposed to be just for any shadow runner. It's generic. Um, okay. So for Karma, we want to get our attribute of strength up to six. So that'll max that out. Uh, we also want to get um, our magic. Um, Powerball, you can do whatever you want with that, as well as some of the others. But I want to use... Um, I want to get heal... Uh, freeze and invisibility up to um, six. I already have summon spirit up to six just to show how much damage it did, but you didn't need to do that. Powerball, you can do whatever you want. If you want to raise up to six, that's great, but I'm not going to really use Powerball. I might use it once just to show you, even though you know what Powerball looks like, but let's see. Freeze, yeah, we'll get freeze. Mainly invisibility and heal is what I want to get up to six because that maxes it out. Um, and then body. We want to get body and magic up to at least 13 if you can. Um, let's see. Yeah, that's why I need a bit more. Uh, uh, bit just only two more karma to get me up to thirteen. If you don't want to get up to thirteen, you could probably do this section with a bit less um, karma or a bit less stats. It's just easier if you have the HP and everything for that. So, all right, let's equip our new HK rifle. Nice. Uh, and then let's equip the armor, the uh, partial body suits. Boom, seven. Woo. There you go. Now we can handle Drake's uh, thing. Like I said, you could probably do this without it, but it'd be a bit challenging. And unfortunately, our our weapon, you can kind of tell that the, you can kind of see the stock on the... Yeah, it kind of looks like just slightly... It looks basically like the shotgun, really, to tell you the truth, but... All right, now we should be doing a lot more damage, hopefully. But like I said, there is some random variables involved on that. So, but yeah, we should start eventually seeing double digits um, from damage from guys. But and yeah, I should I should almost take no damage at this point. Kitsune will be the only character to take damage, really. Yeah, still, still get the variables and all that. But uh, oh well. All right, let's go into Drake's Tower. Uh oh. Oh, yeah, probably should. Oh, wait, I didn't need to do that on this floor because we only got a single mage. All right, come on. Die already. There we go. All right, got some new in there. Let me, uh, sorry, I just had to look up the stats on the, uh, um, mage there because now we're in a whole new section there. So let's see. The mage at the entrance at 30 HP, 4 attack, 4 defense, and 11 experience drop. And you can drop 70 to 100 new in there and it looks like hmm, doors appear to not open why not oh wait because there's a computer over here so uh yeah here we go oh. come on oh right i have to <laughs> i was i was waiting to examine it just to show it off i was like no i need to use my uh, cyber deck on this thing so because we need to hack in we need to hack the system man because those doors won't open. Well, or the elevator won't open without that, so. Logging well, into destination 8989 Volcano, so. Alright. So let's, uh. Ah, phone book received. Whoops. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> I accidentally pressed the uh, X button to, uh, to get out. My bad. Uh, let's try that again. Oh, come on. Sorry, making little bit, little mini mistakes today. Oh well, we're not, we're not all perfect. What else does it say? Naka C S four three seven Drake HQ logging, ice active login Drake five four three seven Drake towers logging destination eight 
196 drink volcano so but anyway because we have the password from the rusty stilettos we can actually get into the um uh the L uh, like the computer there otherwise that would have stayed blocked off and there's nothing we could have done about that so there you go. oop walked into that by accident but anyway We've modified the program. You can also destroy it, too. Either way, A button for modify, B to destroy. It doesn't matter. It does the same thing, basically. So, Okay, so now this is probably... You could probably get through the first floor, maybe the second floor, but it is going to be a big getting a little bit more dangerous. So let's... Uh, how's your life? Okay, 42, huh? Well, better be, sa better be prepared on the uh, uh, invisibility when we hit the next floor, so... We don't. Too bad. I think they kind of missed an opportunity to play silly elevator music on a. Nope. Nope. Come on, hit gets me. There we go. Whew. Okay. Oh, sorry. I didn't. I didn't say what they were. What they said because uh, these guys are no match for us. All right, let's kill these guys. Yeah, there's a lot of flicker going on. So let's try to get these guys as fast as we can. Yeah, this is how you're supposed to like survive the encounters. Is you. Uh, Cast, at lower levels, I mean, is you cast invisibility on yourself, and then you, uh, um, retreat, retreat, run away! Oh, I guess he ran out of my space. And luckily at max, uh, invisibility, we can stay invisible for quite a while. There we go, there's that guy. Don't let him get the elevator! Okay, so, um, uh, the problem with, like, letting these guys not go by invisibility is that they can kind of stun lock you and just do, do a ton of damage. But those samurais have 20 to 30 HP, 9 attack, 3 defense, 5 to 7 experience, or 4 to 7 experience. They can drop 70 to 100 new yen. So let's, uh, let's grab there. Yeah, the problem with this is that um, Miss Kitsune could possibly get wrecked if you're not careful. That's why I was, like, doing everything I can to, like, hit her with magic to uh, uh, not, uh, not die. Which I cast a spell more times than I wanted to, so... Unfortunately, most of the stuff I can't... It looks like those are, like, architectural blueprints or something like that, so... There's actually a few computers you can mess with here. Some of these in this whole Drake's Tower can actually be completely ignored because some of them just have junk data, but I'll show them to you anyway. And at some point, unfortunately, the computers start using the same um, style, if that makes sense, of computer, like, program, like, the level in the computers. I guess they got kind of lazy or they're like, eh, whatever, it's not that big of a deal, so... So, yeah, there's a computer there. There's a computer there. And one of these, you do actually need a password to get to the next, or is it the next floor that I need to do? One of the two, but anyway, so. But let's go examine the computers before we head out. Okay, let's do this one. Actually, I think it might be, let's see. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Sorry, I was a, uh, Okay. Yeah, the one we want is up on top, but we want to do this one first. Sorry, I was looking at my notes, so. All right, let's use that on this. Nakasi, actually, I think it's the same type of computer, white notes every time, if I recall. Yeah, it's the same, but uh, but it's a different computer, just same log and destination location, so. Hmm. Take the, but we can't get that, so let's go through here. I grab that data transfer. Actually, I don't even think I need most of these. I think I can ignore most of this stuff. All right, I got the data transfer, and then when we mess with that, it uh, opened this path here. So, and we just need to um, reprogram that. All right, now we can get to the elevator, or activate the elevator to the next floor, I mean. All right, now let's do... Oh. It just shows it opening right there. Now let's go to this computer, because we get a little, uh... We can get some extra money here. So let's, uh... Whoops. Let's go ahead and hack this thing. And luckily I've got plenty of HP, so I don't have to worry about it. With, with uh, Kitsune here, we can, uh heal too if you don't have her like i said you'd only be casting invisibility once anyway and then heal right afterwards if you took any damage so 
could also destroy that. Password needed. All right, well we gotta get through this thing. Oop. Yeah, sorry, I was uh, pressing the wrong button when I was attacking that stuff. So. Oops. Nah, it doesn't matter. <laughs> At least that's what it sounded like to me, anyway. There we go. Hey. Alright. Trash can discarded. Yeah, most of the stuff I grabbed was trash data, but... Drink account, three, four, five, eight, five, four, six, seven, eight, five, four, seven, eight thousand new yen. And we got a data file as well, so let's take a look at the data file. And I believe it's DR14, if I recall. Error, file fragment only. Hmm. So we're a little, we need some more info. So let's go to the next floor here. Let me go ahead and heal uh, Kitsune and myself, just in case she took any extra damage. Since she's got the extra, whoops. Since she's got the extra um, MP and everything like that. So we'll heal ourselves since we took some damage. And this is how we get back down to the bottom floor, by the way, so. Now we just gotta wait for the, uh, the doors to open again. Come on. There we go. I just wanted to... I went down the other ladder just to... Or ladder. Elevator just to show you, like, um, how you get back down to the bottom floor, so... But this elevator here is the one we always do for the next floor, so... All right, let's prepare again. Yeah, like I said, I kind of have to do this. Otherwise, get the one in the shades! Yeah, see how much like slowdown there is because of like how many, how much flicker, how many people are on screen and whatever. But yeah, if I didn't do this, they would just keep like attacking me. But yeah, there's in this floor there's three samurai warriors and a mage. So, um, yeah, see how slow it is. Fool! I'll destroy you all. Yeah, let's get all the. <laughs> Have you noticed how like all the samurai warriors look like Arnold Schwarzenegger from like Terminator? It's probably on purpose, I bet. Did I ever kill that? Okay, he just walked off screen. Haha, -ha, take that. Alright, grab some of And I believe... Let's see... Where's the... Oh, there it is over there. Now, there's only one computer you can uh, do on this one, so... But I'll show you all the ones you can. Uh, yeah, there's a computer there. I think there's quite a few computers, but uh, you only need to go to one computer, too. The rest of them, I believe, have trash data on them. There's a computer there. See, there should be a few more, if I recall correctly. Yeah, there's a computer right there. Three. Okay, it's just the three right there, so... I'm a little bad. Um, okay, so... See, the one we want is actually, weirdly enough, the one, like, right, um, let's see, was it right here? Yeah, it's one, th this is the one we want, so, all right, let's use our cyber deck on that, and pop on into the matrix, uh, oops, yep, same location as always. I was double checking some notes. Sorry if I stopped talking for like a brief second, so. Okay, anyway, sorry. Oh, right. Well, I could have taken the phone, but it doesn't really matter in this case. Hmm, I need a password for that one, so.
So I don't remember every single, like, you know, computer map where, uh... Oh. Yeah. I keep pressing destroy on that one when I want to save it, even though it's not really that big of a deal. Yeah, and if you do, I um, mean, yeah, trash can data, data file obtained. So the data file on this one is dr2 of 4, huh? So yeah, it's another fragment of the data. So we need uh, we need some more info on that. So, okay. And um, you can do the other computers here if you want to do the trash data or kind of test your skills. But one of them has, like, some really nasty stuff in it. Like, I think it's this one that's supposed to be pretty, like, got some weird like damage like stuff that can cause you some uh, some pain so all right but anyway before we go up to the next four though there is actually a little bit of like something that you could probably never get if you like just play normal if you either play by yourself or play with very few uh shadow runners so i want to show off um i want to show off like something that can happen to you if you have a very specific shadow runner in your group um and uh, give me a second uh, to go get them and I'll uh, sh I'll show you where I get them and then show you what happens when you have them in your crew because I want to go and save it because I don't want to pay the money for this guy so I'll see you all in a second actually sorry before I do that I want to unlock the elevator before we do that so my bad so let's uh let's go into the <laughs> yeah uh, I said I'm being a even though I have my notes on this I'm being scatterbrained today it seems like this whole series is I'm just being scatterbrained just like forgetting stuff I was actually going to show or do. So, but yeah, I actually need to get the elevator because, uh, sorry, the third computer is the one that has like just trash data. This one we actually, because the first one we needed to grab for the purposes of um, getting that data information. And this one we actually need for the password to the elevator. And luckily, you can just, uh, after beating all these guys, these guys aren't ran, these guys are designated encounters so you can um you can like leave and come back if you're having trouble or something like that so i right, reprogram that and then try to uh, discard and the elevator is now active okay now i'll show off the uh, shadow runner you need to get this next section so i'll be right back okay we're back at the jagged nails here and we want to hire someone very specific the best the best guy in the game steel flight no we want to hire this random dude right over here although let's see how are you doing uh steel flight yeah see he tells us his name but this guy uh the mage right over here You'll do well to get some experience on your side. Don't listen to those techromancers. You're always going to need some magic with you. Don't insult me. We're talking more than 2,000 million if you want the magic on your side. Money buys power. I don't think I talked to him much la last time from before. Uh, let's see. Uh, what was I going to ask? I was going to see if there's some... Uh, See, Shadow Runner? Mercy seems like uh, some heavy hardware can handle anything. Remember, though, Chummer, when the ammo runs out, you, you the magic can save your skin. Let's see, I could have swore. I was trying to see if there's any, like, a a information to kind of ask him that, uh, quit stalling, are we gonna deal? Yeah, I guess not in this case, so. Okay, well, let's hire him anyway. Because usually he's like 2,000, but, uh,. With high negotiation, he drops down to 1,500, so let's hire him. And he's called, you know, wise decision. He's called the mage. Shouldn't we have a, a name for him? Well, he's called Spatter, by the way, from what, from like the, the data. There's probably somewhere like a question that gives him his name, but for some reason he's, you know, doesn't obviously give it. It's not even on his like information. But anyway, he's got six body, eight magic, four strength and one charisma. He's got a Warhawk pistol and a mesh jacket. Uh, Magic, you can use Powerball, Heal, and Armor. Armor is actually pretty good. It gives you, uh, depending on the level, it gives you so many points of armor to take less damage. So, um, for so for the Drake Tower, it's actually pretty good. You don't have to use him. There is another uh, Shaman that can use armor. 
Um, I forgot his name off the top of my head, but there is. Uh, let's see. And I think skills wise, he just has negotiate too. For I don't know why they give NPCs negotiate, but whatever. Um, so I guess he wouldn't be terrible to hire, but he's not the best for that cost. It's better to just get someone else. So, but yeah, because of my three charisma, I can just bring multiple people with me. So, which I've maxed out my charisma. So, we're, and yeah, he uses his pistol instead of his mage ball or whatever. And he talks about like using magic, but he just has actually technically the only attack spell in this game is Powerball. So anyway, let's go back to Drake Tower and show off why you don't want to have Spat in your group when you get to a certain point in the in the game. So or at this point, now I don't know if if this affects him after you reach this floor. I might actually I might look that up after this. It, it might affect him at this point too. But uh, anyway, we want to get up to the fourth floor, which you've already unlocked. So let's go do that. And uh, uh, by the way, I also saved in between the recording, so if you want to know why, <laughs> just so just so I don't waste the money on this. So, all right, help me out with this bear. I thought it would follow me around, Armitage. Prepare to meet your doom. Yeah, for whatever reason, he he betrays us. Like, there's no other than he said he was tired of following me around. There we go. That's how you find out his name. It's because of the, uh, uh, when he betrays us. But yeah, there's no indication of why. I think it's because he was working for Drake uh, this whole time, or at least he was on his payroll or something like that. But, and then, yeah, you can either leave the floor or kill him. If you leave the floor, he disappears from the game permanently. So he never, he never pops back up at the Jagged Nail again. So, oh yeah, and this floor has four Samurai Warriors, by the way. And, uh... Yeah, I was afraid kids need my diet, although I'm not going to keep this save anyway because I don't want to spend 1500 on him. If I'm going to spend 1500 or save 1500 I'm going to spend it like Steel Flight or something like that, not a, not a, you know, the, the that bozo who betrayed us or whatever. But I think maybe there was going to be, like, maybe, I think what the intention was that maybe there was going to be some dialogue with uh, with Spatter to indicate that maybe he's working for Drake or knows more than he lets on, but... Unfortunately, because of either time, no, not enough code, or whatever, he just attack. He just says he's tired of our crap and attacks us. So there you go. So something that you might have missed on this playthrough or playing Shadowrun if you didn't weren't aware about it. But uh, well, what happens if we don't go to this tower without splatter? Can we make it to the top? And is Drake's name literal? Find out next time in the next episode of Shadowrun SNES the beta version. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.